Assalamualaikum. We are the ORL HNS team from UITM. We have produced this video on management of ecosystems and its emergencies. We hope by the end of this video, you will have the knowledge to be able to manage patients on tracheostomy. Tracheostomy care does not have to be daunting. We are confident you will benefit from this video in providing safe and effective care to the patients. Now, let's get better acquainted with the star of our video, the tracheostomy tubes. Tracheostomy is like... The cuff tracheostomy tube has an inflation port which is used to fill air into the tracheostomy tube cuff and this enables a good seal to be produced when the patient is ventilated, like so. The double lumen tracheostomy tube has an inner and outer tube. The inner tube can be removed like so and replaced with a new one when it is dirty. Some tubes have a fenestration and this enables the patient to speak. An adjustable flange tracheostomy tube enables for adjustable lengths to be used for the patient according to their requirement. Tracheostomy care is simple. However, if not done properly, can lead to potentially fatal complications. Oh yes, it involves certain procedures such as suction of the tracheostomy tube, Anchoring of tracheostomy tube with ribbon ties and also application of the stoma dressing. Let's have a look. The length of the suction catheter is marked to approximately 10 cm. This is to ensure that it does not go beyond the tip of the tracheostomy tube when inserted. The suction catheter is inserted up to the mark point. and then activated and the suction catheter is slowly withdrawn while rotating. Sodium bicarb is instilled drop by drop into the inner side of the tracheostomy lumen. The patient is positioned supine and the sandbag is removed.
a loop is made with the ribbon ties with one end shorter than the other. The loop is inserted into the flange and at all times the assistant must maintain the tracheostomy tube in place. This is repeated on the other side. Once both ribbon ties have been attached to both flanges, the long end of the ribbon tie is passed underneath the patient's neck to her assistant using a forceps. And at the same time, the end is passed to the main procedure and this is pulled to her side. The ribbon is tied one side at a time with the assistant inserting her finger underneath the ribbon tie and is tightened. The ribbon tie is secured with the rift knot. And this is repeated on the assistant side. Okay. The tracheostoma is cleaned using a normal saline soaked cotton wool, being careful to gently manipulate the tracheostomy and its flanges to avoid dislodge. To complete the dressing of the tracheostomy, a keyhole dressing is inserted using a forceps. This may be instilled with a small amount of flavin to maintain antibacterial activity. Okay, Nick, why do we stress so much on every little detail in tracheostomy care? Well, Nora, it's because it concerns the airway, which is the first step in basic life support. So, let's have a look at the common tracheostomy emergencies and how we should deal with them. A small wisp of cotton wool can be used to test for air blast. A mirror or a cool spatula can be used to test for air blast and misting. The dorsum of the hand can be placed in front of the tracheostomy tube to test for any movement of air. In a partially obstructed tube, there might be resistance felt when a suction catheter is inserted. This might be due to dried secretions or crusting. The dried secretions can be dissolved with sodium bicarbonate instilled into the tube. This is allowed 10 seconds and suctioning is repeated. The airway patency should then be reassessed with the usual methods, such as cotton wool, air blast. 
in cases of complete obstruction of the tracheostomy tube, the suction catheter may not be able to be passed at all. In which case, you will have to prepare for a tracheostomy tube change. A thorough inspection of the tracheostomy tube is essential in order not to miss a dislodged tube. Under no circumstance should you ever reinsert a dislodged tracheostomy tube. There will be no air blast present in a completely obstructed tube. And insertion of a suction catheter will reveal resistance at the tip of the tracheostomy tube. Equipment needed for a tracheostomy tube change using the Seldinger method include a good light source, dressing set, lubrication jelly, spare ribbon ties, scissors or blade, two tracheostomy tubes of different sizes, one at least half or one size smaller than the original size, a nasogastric tube, and a sandbag. The nasogastric tube length is measured at least three lengths of the tracheostomy tube before it is cut. This will act as the introducer. The patient is positioned lying supine and the sandbag is inserted underneath the shoulders with the head and neck extended. A blade or a scissors is used to cut the ribbon tie The nasogastric tube is inserted beyond the tip of the tracheostomy tube. The patient may cough at this point. The tracheostomy tube is then slowly and carefully removed, ensuring that the nasogastric tube is not removed from the airway along with the tracheostomy tube. The new tracheostomy tube is then fed through the Ryles tube into the airway. The nasogastric tube is then removed and the placement is confirmed using a cotton wool to check for air blast. The equipment needed for a tracheostomy tube change under direct vision is the same as a cell danger method except for the use of a tracheal dilator. The assistant will remove the tracheostomy tube gently and the tracheal dilator is inserted into the stoma and direct vision to locate any tracheal rings or feel any air blast. A lubricated tube is inserted initially 90 degrees perpendicular to the direction of the tracheal. Introducer is removed and placement is checked with a cotton wool and once this is confirmed, tracheodilator is gently removed. The patient is positioned supine and the sandbag is removed. A loop is made with the ribbon ties with one end shorter than the other. The loop is inserted into the flange and at all times the assistant must maintain the tracheostomy tube in place. This is repeated on the other side. Once both ribbon ties have been attached to both flanges, the long end of the ribbon tie is passed underneath the patient's neck to her assistant using a forceps. And at the same time, the end is passed to the main procedure 
and this is pulled to her side. The ribbon is tied one side at a time with the assistant inserting her finger underneath the ribbon tie and is tightened. The ribbon tie is secured with the rift knot. And this is repeated on the assistant side. If all else fails, we go to plan B. Prepare to intubate. We hope that this video has been informative and will give you the confidence to manage patients with tracheostomy safely.